This is my iPad. For the longest time, it's been that weird middle child between my laptop and my phone. And at first, I honestly wasn't sure how best to fit it into my workflow. And while it can't quite replace either my MacBook or my iPhone, there are certain things that I've realized it just does better than both. So in this video, I'll share how I set up my iPad to minimize distractions and all the productive ways that I use it in my day-to-day -day life so that you might get some ideas on how to make your iPad work for you, not against you. Click subscribe right now if you wanna see more videos like this one. So the first thing I do when setting up any device is to reduce clutter. I've talked about this in other videos, but basically I like to delete any unnecessary apps or any apps that I want to avoid using. There's so many great apps and things you can do on your iPad or iPhone these days. And while many of them can provide real benefit to your life, there's just as many, if not more, that can be significant distractions that might hold you back from more important things. Now, I'm not saying that we should never watch YouTube or Netflix or play games, but if we have some important goals that we're working towards in life, or maybe we're not fully satisfied with our current life situation, and we feel like some of these apps or activities could be sort of distracting us or holding us back in some way, then the easiest way to sort of reduce the amount of time we spend doing those is to simply delete the apps from our devices. I personally like to keep a pretty clean home screen setup with only the apps that I want to sort of encourage myself to use more. So this might be the Kindle or Audible app or maybe Apple Notes or a journal app, or in my case, I have Anki and a Japanese dictionary app because I'm trying to get myself to study more Japanese. And then any other apps that might be distracting or I rarely use them, I'll either delete them from the device entirely or hide them away in the app library. Now, as for notifications, I personally like to turn off almost all notifications across all of my devices, but especially on my iPad, I haven't really found a good reason to keep any of the notifications on. And this is because I want to be intentional about when I pick up my iPhone or my iPad to use it and don't wanna be subject to some random app pinging me with some notification that basically just says, come back and use our app. And then all of a sudden I'm sucked into some doom scrolling routine. Turning off notifications is probably the quickest and easiest way that I've found to reduce screen time and improve your focus. A couple other settings I like to change are show app library in dock and show suggested and recent apps in dock. I turn both of these off just so I don't have random apps pop popping up on the dock and I can keep it nice and clean and minimal. All right now let's talk about using my iPad for productivity. So lately I've really enjoyed following sort of a hybrid digital slash analog productivity system. After you're done watching this video, I would check out this video on my channel to see more details about the exact sort of life productivity organization system that I'm following this year. And while I definitely enjoy the convenience and other benefits that come with using these digital productivity apps, there's something about just physically writing out ideas or goals or a to-do list that makes you take it more seriously. I remember hearing Andrew Huberman and Cal Newport talk about this on one of their podcasts. And the great thing about the iPad is you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You can get the convenience and organizational benefits of the digital world while still getting that analog handwritten feel when you use your iPad paired with an Apple Pencil. So I often like to write out a simple to-do list or some ideas I have by hand in the Apple Notes app with my Apple Pencil. And writing by hand on the iPad has gotten really good recently, especially since they added some AI updates to Apple Notes, where basically if you write something by hand, it will sort of correct your handwriting to make it look a bit neater while maintaining your natural handwriting style. And this has been super useful for me who doesn't have the prettiest handwriting. I also enjoy writing on my iPad if I want to take a more visual approach to planning out my YouTube videos or vlogs. And I'll usually do this in the Apple Freeform app, which is their new sort of whiteboard app. Now you might be thinking that writing or drawing on your iPad could never feel like using real pen and paper. And I honestly thought so too, until I started using Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector that transforms your iPad into a more natural writing and drawing experience. It's nano dots technology gives just the right amount of resistance to your Apple Pencil, mimicking the feel of paper without sacrificing screen clarity. Whether I'm taking notes, journaling, or planning my next video, Paperlike has made that process feel smooth and precise. And honestly, it's made me enjoy writing on my iPad so much more. And let's be honest, when you enjoy the tools that you're using, you're way more likely to be consistent in the long run. Plus, Paperlike reduces glare and smudges, so your screen still looks crisp 
while giving you that tactile feedback that you'd expect from pen and paper. If you're ready to make the most of your iPad, check out Paperlike using the link in the description. They even offer a 100 day satisfaction guarantee so you can try it out for yourself completely risk free. Now I also really enjoy using the iPad for planning out my day. So if you're into using a digital calendar or doing any sort of time blocking, it's perfect for that. I think the screen size is just the right amount for the calendar. You can also use the split screen feature so you can put the calendar up on one side and maybe your to-do list app or notes app on the other side. You can kind of go back and forth and that whole process for planning out your day can be really smooth and seamless. Now the next way I incorporate my iPad into my productivity workflow might be a bit underrated, but it's super useful. And that is to use the iPad as a second monitor for my laptop. Now I've always found that using two full-size monitors on my desk can be a bit distracting and sort of clutter up my setup, but there are definitely times when having some sort of second screen can be really useful, but I feel like I don't really need a full monitor for that. And that's where the iPad can really be the perfect second monitor. Now there's sort of two main ways I go about this. In both cases, you've got to connect your iPad to your computer, either via Bluetooth or USB-C usually works better. And then in the settings, you can either click connect your iPad to your keyboard and mouse, or I think extend or mirror your Mac's display to your iPad. Now, when you connect your iPad to the keyboard and mouse, it's sort of keeping it in its own iPad mode, and it allows you to drag files or images from your Mac directly onto your iPad. And this has been really useful for me if I edit videos or photos on my computer on the big monitor, and then I want to quickly drag it over to my iPad to post on Instagram or social media. It makes that workflow super smooth and seamless. You don't have to bother with AirDrop or sending files back and forth. You can just drag and drop. By the way, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see what I'm up to on the day-to-day. -day. I'm also gonna start posting a lot more lifestyle content and other things on there, so definitely follow. I'll leave a link in the description. And this workflow is also really useful if you do any sort of handwritten notes or drawing on your iPad. You can very quickly go back and forth between files on your Mac and or images and drag them over to your iPad, etc. And the other option is to actually use your iPad as simply an extension of your computer. So it'll look exactly like a mini version of your computer's desktop on your iPad screen. You can drag things back and forth, open up apps. I personally like to either display my calendar on there. I think that's a perfect size for it or keep up some notes, a to-do list or have my finder file window if I need to kind of quickly go back and forth dragging files from finder into my video editing program or anything like that. It's also great to display my Spotify window or any sort of video or tutorial that I might be referencing. And I also enjoy using my iPad for learning. So for reading books, I often go between either my Kindle or my iPad, I think both are great and both have their own benefits. The Kindle is really nice because the battery lasts basically forever and it's a distraction-free single-use device. The iPad is really nice because it's way easier to quickly highlight things or type out notes. I hate typing on the Kindle, it's just so hard and the responsiveness is just terrible. And it's also great for using the split screen feature so you can have Apple Notes up on one side and the Kindle app on the other if you wanna do some hardcore note taking on a book. One of the things I liked about the Kindle is that the brightness can go really low. So if you're reading late at night, it's not gonna mess up your sleep or strain your eyes. And the normal brightness on the iPad doesn't get that dim. If you're in a completely dark room, it's still gonna be pretty bright. But within the Kindle app itself, there's another brightness slider so you can actually dim the screen even lower than the iPad itself can dim it, if that makes sense. So I definitely test that out if you enjoy reading on your iPad. I've also been trying to get back into studying the Japanese language. So I enjoy putting up a podcast on one side of the screen and having my Japanese dictionary or Anki to quickly create flashcards on the other side. And I also got the Magic Keyboard that goes with the iPad. It's a bit pricey, but the quality is so good. It feels exactly like the keyboard on the MacBooks, and it's just leagues above any other third-party keyboard that I've tried for the iPad. Comment down below how you like to use your iPad. Do you use it more for just media consumption and watching videos? Because of course it is really good for that. Or do you use it for more productive work? definitely let me know. I'm curious. Click here to subscribe and click here to see the latest video from me. Have a good rest of your week. I will see you next week.